Welcome to Speaking About Songs of Faith, a series of reflections by Holy Comforter parishioners about their favorite hymns and anthems. I am Patrick Pope, the Director of Music at Holy Comforter. Today, I have the privilege of interviewing Jane Crutchfield for the fifth of six interviews to be shared during the Lenten season. Jane, welcome to Speaking About Songs of Faith. Um, it's really nice to see you, Jane, and to talk with you today about um, a piece of music that is near and dear to your heart, and you have some reflections to share. So um, tell us a little bit of, of a story behind it, and there will be photographs um, that show up in the interview okay. as well. Well, um, so many of my memories um, of my favorite hymns and anthems and so forth um, are tied to uh, Charlie and the experiences we shared together uh, mm -hmm. throughout his his career of music and church music and so forth and singing in all of my choirs and his choirs. But um, Charlie and I met at my home church in Knoxville um, mm -hmm. when I was 18, young kid. And uh, his aunt and uncle were members at my church. Okay. And he uh, came to our choir rehearsal one evening and um, he kind of stuck around at church and then became our church organist and so forth and continued till he graduated at UT. Then we moved to Memphis uh, when he started working for a bank down there and then um, substituting in different churches in Memphis. Then uh, we moved from big Memphis to a little bitty Wilkesboro, North Carolina, which was quite a transition. What year was but we started that? going... Pardon? What year was that? That was in 1978. Okay. We were mere children. Um, but anyway, we started going to little St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Wilkesboro, a little bitty historic church up on the hill in mm -hmm. Wilkesboro. It was, um, uh, the church itself was built in 1848. Um, so it kind of gives you context a little bit of the area and so forth. Uh, but anyway, Charlie um, became the organist there while he was working for the bank in town. And um, Saturdays in Wilkesboro when we lived there uh, would involve Charlie going over to St. Paul's to practice. And I really think most of his practice was spent uh, talking with the rector and yeah. jawing back and forth. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But... Um, <laughs> The, the When we got there, the choir at St. Paul's was very small and not very experienced. They, there were people, their hearts were willing and they led worship, but not much experience and mm -hmm. um, not very pulled together. Sure. But um, after we had been there a while and, um, you know, as people move in and out and everything, um, the choir kind of, what's the word, coalesced sure, a little uh -huh. bit more. Right. And um, so this one time, Charlie pulled out this anthem that he liked a lot. But when we first heard it, we were all like, Ugh, mm -hmm. that music is really old. And those words are very archaic. And... So we didn't really like it that much, but he kept trying. Mm -hmm. And eventually we got to where we could do it pretty well for a, a small group of people. And um, and it sort of became our, our anthem because we had worked so hard on it uh, to learn it. And, and maybe because it meant a lot to Charlie, it was something that he grew up doing at his home church in Memphis. Mm -hmm. So um, so anyway, um, you know, members of our choir up there, um, one was a middle school music teacher. Um, one was a, a young housewife. Um, she had sung in her high school um, chorus. Her husband had been in the band and he hadn't really sung. He he had to learn how to mm -hmm. how to 
make his voice sing the notes that he saw on the page because you mm -hmm. know it's it's a transition right. to go from playing right. an instrument to singing yeah um, yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting and then we also had um a gentleman who um had this really really lovely bass voice but he was very hard of hearing and that made it interesting he was always mm -hmm. uh, half a beat behind everybody else and it, it drove uh, the music teacher really batty for him <laughs> to be that half beat behind, but sure. uh, but his voice added so much to the tone. Um, but we had um, a soprano, Nurse Nancy, and then another soprano whose um, parents owned the local floral shop. Um, we had a retired gentleman who had been an engineer. I mean, it, it was just very much like Holy Comfort. It, it was a mixture of people with mm -hmm. varied backgrounds and and everything. Sure. But uh, oh, and also the priest's wife was in the choir, mm -hmm. and she was a hoot. She was a hoot. Sure. Um, to put that in context a little bit, um, let's say we were at a covered dish dinner or something. And if her husband was saying, if the priest was saying a prayer for the blessing, she mm -hmm. would decide about five words into it that it was too long. And she would just very loudly say, amen, <laughs> which would crack us all up. But sure. anyway, anyway, um, um, and I, I think given the background of everybody and, and just so varied it, it was very much like the our hymn i sing a song of the saints of god because oh yeah yeah you know just so many different people but anyway um when it was time for us to leave wilkesboro we were transferred to charlotte um with the um the bank transfer and so forth Mm -hmm. And when when we left, one of the gifts to us um, was a cross stitch uh, picture of this anthem that Charlie had worked so hard to teach us and had uh -huh. become our anthem. And so that that's a, a big treasure to me. Uh, it hangs on yeah. the wall of our piano now. Mm -hmm. But then here we get, well, let's see, we came to Charlotte in 85. Okay. 85. Okay. Okay. Then um, seems like about in the year 2014 at Holy Comforter, you, Patrick. Yeah. Introduced the same anthem. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And the choir reacted pretty much the way the choir in Wilkesboro reacted. The music was very Victorian sounding, kind of like, eh, and the words were archaic, mm -hmm. but you persevered mm -hmm. and you worked with us and we learned it and it really became our song. And I think the, the high point for singing it was when we sang it at Duke Chapel. I forget mm -hmm. what year that was. Was that maybe 2016? I'm, I can't remember what year that was. 2017. Um, yeah, I've got the recording. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But um, but that anthem is John Ireland's Greater Love. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Patrick, during the last year, so many times on Sunday mornings sitting here virtual church and everything and thinking about um so much going on with the pandemic those words would come back to me mm -hmm. about greater love hath no man than this that the, a man laid down his life for his friend mm -hmm. and I think about that in the context of of the first responders sure how, right you know how, how they've had to pitch in and do things that they never expected they would have to do. But, um, but anyway, greater love really resonates with me because mm -hmm. it connects 
my Holy Comforter Choir family, with my St. Paul's Wilkesboro family, with Charlie's First Methodist Church Memphis family. So That's wonderful. All those strands are coming together. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly.
Thank you for listening to the fifth installment of Speaking About Songs of Faith. Next week's episode will feature Bill Livingston and one of his favorite hymns, My Song is Love Unknown.